one, and we are officially live. What is up? This is Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Super excited today. I got my man, Joey Sicoriano, the man, the myth, the legend. I met Joe at the shareholders event in Orlando, and uh, he and I just hit it off right away. Um, I'm super excited about the value that Joe will do for today for you all who are watching and listening. We're going to talk about how to immediately sell more homes by communicating better with your buyers and sellers. And so without further ado, yo, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, Mike. How are you, my friend? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I'm excited to kind of pick your brain on some of this stuff because I know that um, we're going to deliver some, some, some actionable material that people can start implementing in their business uh, right away. Sounds good. Sounds really good. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be on here today with you. Absolutely, man. Why don't we do this? Let's uh, let's just give a quick bio on you, um, kind of uh, your story, how you got into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, I originally um, was with Nordstrom's Department Stores for about 15 years and learned a lot about sales and service there. Was in upper management, and set, interestingly enough, I got a call from a customer out in uh, Peabody, Massachusetts, 92 year old lady that uh, did a gift certificate order for uh, that I did for her. And her daughter at the time was a the personal real estate agent of Clint Eastwood. <laughs> and at the end of that call, she said, son, have you ever thought about real estate? And the funny thing is I had the book next to me in that moment. And no, I just no, felt no. like it was a really amazing confirmation. And after that, I just pursued it. And she was um, she was in my ear for the first few years calling me. She was in an assisted living facility out there. It's interesting is she was teaching real estate classes to all the staff. And uh, it was just, it was an amazing transition. And Why do you think she took such a liking to you? You know, I think it was just, I think it was how we interacted. I think it was just the, the, the service that was in my blood, yeah. you know, that I learned for so many years. And uh, we just connected and we just became pals for so many years. So it was, it was really amazing. Yep. Do you think you were able to pick up a lot of what you still use or were, or, or were using then from your time in the retail industry? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was really about how it qualifying our customers' needs, how to really get what they're looking for, and how to under-promise and over-deliver constantly. Yep. You know, as, yep. you, as you know, in real estate, there's a lot of moving parts, and we play a small piece of that. Um, but also our systems and processes need to protect our clients from some of those blind spots that are not in our direct control. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and so what's really what's cool, really I think, about what we're going to talk to you or talk about today is the fact that, you know, there are a lot of real estate agents out there and, um, you know, there are a lot of excuses as to uh, why people are succeeding in today's marketplace and, um, one of the biggest things that I hear when I'm talking to real estate agents um, about you know, neglecting the feelings or prospecting or lead generation or uh, business development, whatever you want to call it, is that you know, they don't make the calls because they don't know what to say, right? And we've all heard that before. And you know, whether that's true or not, um, it, it remains to be seen. But in your estimation, um, well, talk to me about this, the, the importance of communication uh, when uh, dealing with buyers and sellers. You know, the, the importance of communication, I mean, I don't think there's a skill on this earth that's more valuable than our ability to communicate. It being able to draw the right information out of the people that we're working with. Because what I've learned is people know what they want, but they don't know what they need. Yeah. And as we learn how to communicate, as we learn how to ask the right questions, how to one of my favorite one of my favorite dialogues that, that can best summarizes this is, is that when you ask a seller or a buyer one year from now, you've bought or sold your home. What would have to happen for you to feel you made the right decision by hiring us for the job of selling your home? 
right? Everyone has an idea, Mike, of what they are anticipating good service, what they're anticipating, what they need, right? And, and it's up to us to figure out what experience are they anticipating? How do we deliver that and how we deliver what we know they need? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes yeah, perfect, it makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah. So, so the, the, evolution the evolution of communication, communication for you, you, because when we start, start off in this industry, industry um, um, it's, it's the, the terminology is different, but from a service perspective, we, we care for our clients pretty much the same way across the board in most industries, right? If we're really good at what we do. Yes. So how did that translate from Nordstrom into real estate for you? How did it translate it as far as taking my experience and how did I bring it into real estate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the, I would say the biggest key really was understanding our customers, understanding their needs and finding it a way. I remember um, Jim Nordstrom used to always say that we have to wow our customers one customer at a time. Mm -hmm. And they would, they drilled into us. I mean, I, I basically, I started there when I was 16. So they raised me as a kid in the, in the business world. And they always would say is we always have to take responsibility for how an experience happens. There's always a way that we can take responsibility, how we can look back at our systems, at our processes, right. In order to prevent that from ever happening again. Yeah. And it was always our challenge. We have come a customer come in and they're angry, they're upset. They're in a, and how do we send them away feeling better about, uh, about, um, their experience with us. Yeah. And that's what, it, how it's been in real estate. And I think the biggest misconception in the real estate field is we don't really know what good service is. And I think the biggest part of good service is being willing to have those difficult conversations with, with, with our clients, difficult conversations when it comes to pricing, difficult conversations when it comes to setting expectations. One of my favorite uh, things that I've taught for years is we have to be so good at our presentation skills in order to protect our clients from themselves. <laughs> like it's huge, that. Mike. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. I mean, how, how, how do we, how do we get so good at presenting? We, we, we've taken time to understand their fears. We've taken time to understand their apprehensions, why they're not deciding to move, why they're not deciding to put their home on the market, why they're deciding not to move on a property. But how do we incorporate that in everything that we do so we really can protect them from themselves. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you know, the importance of what you just said is it, and, and why the real estate agent is so important in the transaction is the fact that we can draw upon our past experiences, right? So the more homes you sell, the more experiences that you have, um, the better you can educate um, through, you know, some of your past experiences. And a great way to do that is by telling stories. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Oh. Stories, in my opinion, are the it's the it's the best way to convey a message because yeah. they're so engaged in hearing the experience that someone else has that it gives them an opportunity. They're open to receiving that. And there's not as much of that uh, that guard that's up, you know, in the sales process. Yep. yep. You, you so, sell the so story, you tell the facts, right? The, 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 the funny thing that I always heard is that no one, no one ever told us bedtime facts, right? We were always told bedtime stories. Yes. I like that. Yep. So walk me a little bit um, through the process. And, and I know when we talked earlier today, you mentioned that there's some overlap here between the buyer and the mastery. So walk me a little bit through the process. Um, when you do some of the presentations, like how you start off when it comes to communication uh, with buyer people. Really, uh, the, the best way that I usually start out with, with the clients, whether they're a buyer or seller, is I ask them, so what have you heard about what's going on in the market? Because mm -hmm. I really want to know what is their perception? What is their perception? Where are they drawing from? Right. right? Are, are they on point? Are they off point? Uh, while affirming them and, and affirming and appreciating their desire to want to get information. And then it's about them and I sitting together and I help them to interpret what's going on in the market. So yeah. whether it's, let's use a buyer as an example, what we do our buyer's consultation. And when we figure out exactly what price ranges they're looking for, you know, what they're wanting to stay within and what kind of home is I literally will sit them down and we'll find and look and locate the last two weeks to 30 days of homes that have sold 
in that subdivision, in that zip code, right? So I want to give them a clear idea of what they're expecting to get for the amount of money. Mm -hmm. Most agents, because the average agent sells three or four homes a year. And the reason why they do that is it's very haphazardly, right? My goal is in, in that time is to build what I call consumer confidence. Mm -hmm. So we start out by building consumer confidence, giving them the tools and the insight exactly what I, what I tell them is I want to put your finger on the pulse of the market mm -hmm. because when we're out there and we're looking at homes, I want to, I, I want you to be in a position to have enough knowledge to be able to make a move with confidence. And yeah. most of us, I believe fail at that. Where do you think you think are, and I'm glad you said that. How do they fail though? That's what I want to know. Like where are they, where are most agents stopping the ball at? They're, they're failing because they're not, I really believe they're not really committed to be, to mastery in their business. Mm -hmm. You know, mastery is someone that, that is in constant promote. As I say, mastery is not a destination. It's a process. It's a journey. You know what? Um, they're not committing themselves to mastery. Mastery is saying, if I'm going to work with buyers, because most agents will start out working with buyers is we need to master the buyer process. Yeah. We need to master it. And what is it mastering it? Okay. Well, what are their concerns? What are their objections? And I think our coaching and training industry for the most part in real estate hasn't really addressed us, you know, really considering their fears. Real estate is a really emotional business. And how do we, how do we incorporate um, dialogues and presentations to provide peace of mind? Yeah. They're writing a check for something that's huge. How are we, how are we addressing their fears? How are we addressing their reluctance to act or their emotional reluctance? I think as we, as we begin to turn ourselves over to this thing called real estate, we really need to, to become masters in our field. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want to know what your thoughts are on like, like people, people just popping out the whole crop. Like, I think one of the things that kind of drives me nuts is, and you're right, I don't feel like people are really getting to know their clients. And, and if you don't really get to know your clients, you can't serve them at the highest level. And so I always have a problem with, I'm okay if you get a call on the listing, right, that you've got a sign call, and, and you know, uh, Bob Smith wants to see your listing that he called in on, and you, you go out and show it to him. But... I, I'm always a bit of a proponent of getting that client back into the office and really showing them how you work, right? Telling your story, right? Really connecting with them, understanding yes. them and what they want. Yes. Instead of, you know, just going back to your office, finding a bunch of properties and emailing them to them and saying, which ones do you want to look at, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I think uh, I, I think in order for us to set a duplicatable experience with our clients, a referable experience, we have to be willing to meet with them and to do the consultation, connect with what they're looking for, connect what's driving them, see what they know about it, what they don't know about it, how informed they are. You know, I, I guess what comes to my mind right now is, are we order takers? Or are we salespeople? Yeah. yeah. An order taker is someone who's going to, who's going to send properties or receive properties and open doors. Mm -hmm. I can get people to open doors for really cheap. You with me? I don't yeah. want a door opener. I don't want an order taker. I want a salesperson. Yeah. Clients need to be led. They need to be led because in order for them to have the best possible experience, we need to have the, um, the dedication to them and lead them in the right way. And the buyer's consultation or sales consultation I won't do it. I mean, when, when I, when I, when I won't sell a home without doing that. I remember my yeah. sister wanted to buy a home for me and I asked her to come in for the buyer's consultation and she was, Oh, you don't need to do that. I'm your brother. I'm, I'm your sister. I said, Annie, I've been doing this for 15 years. If I'm going to sell your home, you need to come in for the consultation. Yeah. This process is geared to make sure you find the right home is to make sure you don't have buyer's remorse yeah. to make yeah. sure you feel the best about this. I'm not, passionate. I'm not passionate about it at all, Mike. <laughs> isn't that, no, right? And I'm not either. And by the way, so he's like, isn't that how we maintain our value in this industry? Isn't that how we fight off the companies like Zillow and Realtor.com? Right? I mean, it, that that scares me to think that the mentality or the future of this industry might look like 
you get a lead on, uh, and it's just a showing, right? And it says, hey, we want to look at ABC property and it takes them Zillow or Realtor.com and you just pop out and show the listing. Yeah. And, and the reason why our commissions are being squeezed is because we're taking the easy way out. And guess what? The people who aren't taking the time to bring their clients into the office to get to, 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 get to know them on a personal level and understand what their real estate needs are, yeah. are the ones that deserve their commission squeezed and eventually just squeezed out of the industry. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. And, and really, um, if you don't mind me just being really frank with, with this, is I believe that we a lot of ways we've done it to ourselves in this yeah. industry. We haven't become masters because at the end of the day, you know, the internet companies, they can't compete with me. They can't compete with me because when, when I'm finished meeting with the client, they are so excited. They are so knowledgeable that they're ready to buy a home that day. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're making the moves with confidence. But again, when we have someone, when we have these agents that are lukewarm and only selling one home every quarter, they're, they're not pursuing mastery and they're inviting these internet companies to come in because the internet companies, what they've done is they've taken the average agent, the three to four home producer, and they have convinced the industry. They've convinced our customers that they don't need us anymore. Right. They've convinced it. And, and if we're just doing what these companies have access to, then we're, we're agreeing with, uh, with them commoditizing us. Yeah. You know, I, I know I've, I've done I've done trainings all over the country and I share this one piece where they get a spreadsheet. Right. Almost like when you go and you're getting either a cell phone or a cable provider. I said, list all the um, all like companies like general companies, Internet companies, you know, list them all in the left column. And then on the top of, of the spreadsheet, have all the services that are in real estate, everything that you can do, you know, everything that you do for a client. And do check marks and see what are all your competitors doing? What are your Zillow's doing? What are your Redfin's doing? And at the end of the day, you have to be doing what they're doing and more. Mm -hmm. But if, until we take time to look at that, because all the check marks, you're giving the client a clear idea what they're going to expect working from you. And at the end of that, when I give them that sheet, I use the famous line, you know, we know you have a lot of choices in real estate. And thank you for, so much for choosing us. What, what's the company that's done that? Yeah. Company that's done that at Southwest, every time you get off an airplane, they say, hey, we know you have a lot of choices to fly. Thanks for choosing us. It's the same thing. Acknowledging it. Talk about the elephant in the room. So, yep. So talk. Am I, did I answer that? Did I answer that question? Yeah. No, you yeah. It, man. So talk okay. a little bit about like, and, and I, I don't want to um, demean any agents who are out there running their business that way. I mean, this show is specifically for people who are trying to improve uh, their business processes. And this may be one that you need to improve in order to maintain your value of the market. So talk to me a little bit about like, um, how are you getting people into the office? Bro? Like, what are you what are you saying to people? Like, let's say you do pop out to show the property and they don't like that property. What would, what is something that you would say to try to get that person back into the office? Well, so I, I met with the client or they're on the phone? No, let's say, let's say, let's say you know, they called in and they wanted to see one of your listings and you ran out and showed them the property and they didn't like it, right? But you knew you wanted to do a buyer concert. How would you push that client back into the office? Um, you know, m m most of the time, Mike, I wouldn't go out to show the property before I did the consultation. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 but uh, it's, it's just something that's just a business practice I've made. You, what I'll usually do is I'll say, hey, what clients like you have found useful in the past as we get together for about 30 minutes, I share with you exactly what's going on in the market. Again, we put your fingers on the pulse of the market, give you a clear idea as far as, you know, what, what kind of home you'd expect to get, um, you know, with, in today's market. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it takes about 30, is that worth about 30 minutes? We come to back to the office and we'll take them through it. Yeah. It's as easy as that. It's a, what clients like you have found useful in the past. The reason why we use that beginning is you said it earlier. It's storytelling. No. What clients like you found useful in the past. So if they tell you, well, oh, hey, I just want to see the property. Can you show it to me? Will you show it to them? Um, you know what? I, I I would probably have one of my showing agents show it to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what I'd end up doing. But I don't run into that objection, Mike, because I built so much value in them. Yeah. I grew so much value as far as figuring out how long they've been looking. And a lot of the times the, the people that are, um, if, if they're just say they're just looking, then I speak to that. 
You know, hey, you know, well, hey, we're, we're just looking. You know, sounds like you're trying to get your feet wet. Great. Well, this is a, a no obligation consultation. You come in, I'll share with you what's going on exactly in the market. And I can also notify you about some upcoming properties that haven't hit the market yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you see why it'd be useful for us to get together for about 30 minutes? Yeah. yeah. I don't get the objection. I really don't. You know, here, here's what I've, I've, I've trained thousands of agents. I tell them, I tell them point blank, you have to be create the conversation in the minds of the buyer or the seller. I'm working with the wrong person. This is the guy I need to be working with. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or the fear of it is, well, if I don't use this person, if I don't use Mike or I don't use Joey for buying or selling a home, um, I'm making a big mistake. And how do you do that? You lead with, you lead with contribution, you know, and you lead, you lead as an expert. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. How does this translate into the seller side of the business? Like, obviously, we, we've leaned heavily on the dollar side of the business, but on the listing side, how are you like, how are you effectively communicating with your sellers? I guess number one, to get them to let you come out to their property and present. And then number two, what are you saying to the presentation? Okay, so let, let's talk about the first part. So, somebody will call me, ask for a home value report. I usually will either, you know, I'll answer the, I'll, I'll call them and say, Hey, you know, this is a desk review. Well, what do you mean? Well, this is an offsite review. I'm giving you kind of a range. So I'll give you a range of numbers. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll mention to them, um, if you'd like, I can stop by for about 15 minutes. I can go through your home and, um, I can give you more spot on number and what I feel the market will, um, will get for your home. And also I can give you an idea of uh, where you should point any dollars that you have in mind as far as getting your home ready for the market. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important, Mike, that I come out and take a look at your home because what we've, what I found, what clients like have me shared with me in the past is they end up investing monies in areas where, um, where it doesn't actually help to sell their home. Yeah. yeah. So I want to pursue it. And usually when I say something to that, to that fashion, they're uh, yeah, sure. Come on down. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel, and you feel like a lot of people are just skipping that step and right, going right into the appointment, right? And they're looking because they're not creating that value. They're not creating the value. Again, if we're just giving them numbers, if we're just giving them numbers, then our internet friends can do the same thing. Right. Right. But if we're, you know, if we're, if we truly are professionals and this is not me, I'm, I'm not doing this to bag on, on agents that are, that are selling three to four. There's some people that do it part time. What I'm saying is, if we want to do this and we want to do it right and we want to protect our industry, we have to pursue it with with the with the intent of becoming masters in our world. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and you had asked me the second question. You asked me is what was the second one? It was uh, your presentation. Like, so you let's say you get out to the property and and, and what are some of the things that you're doing that you think that you, that, that you think give you a leg up versus the competition? Because you are, I mean, you're the master communicator, man. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think the part of it, again, is same thing on the buyer side of it is what have you heard of what's going on in the market? What have you heard about it? I want to know. And uh, I always keep in mind that my opinion doesn't matter. And I really, really drill it into to the what do you mean by that? presentations as I'm valuing property. I'm going over market reports. I'll, I'll, I'll help them to realize that I'm just interpreting the information. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them the way that we evaluate property is my opinion is not in this because my opinion doesn't matter. Right. What matters is that we interpret exactly what's going on in the market and we put a plan together. You and I put a plan together to get most of my money for your home. Yeah. So yeah. I partner up with them and together we look at the market together. We look at the numbers together. We look at past experiences that other sellers have had. Mm -hmm. I don't get pricing, pricing objections because of that reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and if you don't mind elaborating a little bit more on that, when you say you don't get pricing objections, like what do you, what, what specifically are you doing during that account so that you can get those pricing objections? I'm, I'm displaying the information of the fa of facts going on in the market. Like I said, From the, MLS, the MLS, exactly. Okay. MLS and um, very hyper local. I'm very hyper local. When when I uh, when I'm evaluating properties, I'm very hyper local, meaning I will use within one one particular subdivision as as hyper local as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, but again, I'm disassociating my personal opinion with it with this evaluation. 
Okay. This evaluation is about, and, and I'll sit across from say, hey, you know what, the way I value property, my opinion's not in it. The facts will speak for themselves. Right. right. So let's get together. Let me share you, uh, let me share with you what story the market's telling us. Okay. You know, and uh, n- another piece I also mentioned is, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've, you know, been doing this, I've sold thousands of homes and I always hear a seller say, I want top dollar. But the reality of it is top dollar to you, top dollar to me. Convince. We convince where you allow us to use our marketing plan, which sells 15 to 20 times more homes than the average agent. And we bring in multiple offers for you. Market value is buyer's opinions for your home. If we can bring multiple offers to you, we can get an idea exactly what the buyers are thinking about, you know, when it comes to your home and pricing wise. And, you know, it's just, it's so logical. There's very little bit of emotion in it. And we drive amazing results. Yeah. yeah. One thing I wanted to talk to you about too um, is where, where do you think, or how important is mindset in this whole thing? Um, because one thing I know that sells is uh, you know, script practice. Um, that this, this notion that uh, knowing what to say is important. And we, I mean, that, that goes without saying, but script practice, dialogue practice, um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, curious though, like, like having all these scripts script and ha- not, not having the proper mindset, to me, it, it just doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. I, I, I think uh, I call it road work, Mike. I call it road work. In order to become a master, we have to be willing to do the road work. And the road work is constantly studying the world of communications and sales and mastery, constantly bombarding ourselves with brilliance, Right. How much information, I mean, it's, it becomes a daily regimen. It's a daily regimen. Every single day, am I working on my craft? For every hour that you're, for every hour that you're on stage or for every hour that you're doing a presentation, there should be 20 hours of practice. There should be 20 hours of mindset, whether it's reading, mm-hmm. whether it's studying some of the most top communicators. But I also think it's protecting your mind from the outside influences that are going on. Because again, if the average agent is sell three or four homes a year, I have to go back to that, is they don't have a system. They don't have an educational program that they're putting themselves in, that they're yeah, personally yeah. rolling themselves. You know, mindset is huge. It's what is our commitment to it? Yeah. What do, you back, mean, like, like, what do you mean? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what do you mean by exactly by, by um, protecting uh, what goes what in? Goes in. You know, I mean? you know what I mean? Well, it, you know, when we, we have we have two different types of people in our world. We have people that are in the way and they have people that are part of the way. People that are in the way are the ones that are not um, they're not in alignment with what we're going after in our lives. So they don't add to our journey. Mm-hmm. They take away from our journey. They pull from us and they don't push us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So when we have people that are part of our way, those are people that are understanding the type of professional or individual we want to be in our world and supporting us in that process. They're the ones that are lifting us. They're ones that are encouraging us. Even if they don't know anything about our world in real estate or training, whatever it is that we're doing, they're making connections for us. Sure, They're sure. bringing people to us saying, you gotta talk to my nephew, you gotta talk to my brother, you gotta talk to my cousin, you need to talk to this person. Joe, I really realize that you have such a commitment. This person you need to connect with. They're really helping you bring, um, bringing people in your lives that will add to what you're doing. So, so, Joe, how do people, if scripting and knowing what to play and how to play it and mindset and all that is, is intertwined, in my, my personal opinion is that mindset is the foundation of that, right? It, like, yes. You can learn all you want, but if you don't have the proper mindset, it's going to be very difficult to articulate that. And, and so where do you think, how, how do you think, you prepare, you prepare properly with, with mindset, mindset first, first, knowing that that's the foundation, foundation and getting, getting that, that right before moving on into the, the you know the world of knowing, knowing what to what say, say, when to say it, how to say it. It's such a big question, and I'm I'm as I'm sitting here, you know, and as we spoke earlier today, we want to give some practical steps. I think I think mindset. Mindset is important. Like I said, that goes from, from really feeding your mind, conditioning your mind, learning constantly, right? Yep. Leaders yep. are learners. 
I think the biggest mindset piece, Mike, is for us to realize that we're not going to know how to do everything and that we're going to have to have faith that the right answers will show up at the right time while we're in pursuit. Yeah. Love I think that's the, that's the biggest part of it. I remember my mentor. He was old school. He said he walked in the office. He said, Joey, what are you doing? OK, well, I'm getting ready to make some calls and I want to figure out exactly what I'm what I'm going to say. And and he get the phone. He said, grab the phone, call them up and say, do they want to buy or sell? When they say no, they hang up the phone and dial the next number. He says, you're trying to spend so much time trying to figure out what to say and nothing's getting done. Yeah. yeah. As we're continuing. So I guess knowing that the how will show up when we're in action. Yeah. yeah. One of the pieces I've taught for years is when you turn yourself over to the service of other people. Looking at the right scripts, the right ideas and the right approaches will show up. Yeah. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where you get, you, you're in gridlock, right? You don't have an answer. Usually the first thing I say is I need a minute to think about it. Mm -hmm. I'll call you back shortly because I need some time. Right. And then I reassess the situation. And, you know, if my mindset is at, at the service of other people, the right idea, the right approach will show up. Yep. I always tell my team, I, that's such that's a such great a point, man. I always I tell, always like, I think people are calling um, with the idea of trying to be a commission track or trying to get something from the consumer. And so they're not in alignment with their true self. In other words, we, we, we're not here to try and get or take something from people. We're, we're here to try to put in and contribute and help out. Yes. And so, like, it's just a mind shift. If you shift your mind and understand that when you make that call, I'm making this call from, uh, from contribution. In other words, yes. I, have, I have something, I value something uh, within me enough to make that call to the consumer because I can help them through their experience because I have access to information and experiences that they don't. And so it is my duty to call this individual. That's the yes. way I look at it when yes. I call. You know what I call? I call it. you either have commission breath yeah. or you have contribution breath. Yeah. A lot of the other. You know what I mean? Commission breath, you know, I, I, I've, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm a firm believer we, that we, in this business, we have to be a good steward of our finances because when we become a good steward of our finances, because it's hard to do all that stuff when you're trying to keep your lights on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of us have been there before, you know, but we have to be a good steward of our finances so we can be in a place where we can come from contribution, yeah. where we can truly say this is the right move for you, Mr. Or Mrs. Seller to sell your home or Mr. Or Mrs. Seller. This is not the right move for you to move your, to right. sell your right. home, you know, because um, they can smell it a mile away. Commission breath. It stinks. Yeah. <laughs> contribution breath. They can sense it. Yeah. I love it, brother. So. Well, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have? Well, let, let me look. Let me look at some of the things that floated up as I was preparing my mindset for the call. Let's see if there's anything else we haven't done. I think we pretty much have covered most of them. So I just want to throw out there. I, I, I just heard you say that you were preparing your mindset for the call. And, and, and that just illustrates what we were talking about in terms of getting your mindset right. And, and, and so like you were preparing your mindset because you knew that you would, you would be coming from a place of contribution and you needed to get in that place in order to operate um, at your higher level. And so I'm glad you pointed that out, but like, that's the difference between the really good ones and the not so good ones, right? Yes, right. Is that you yes, were coming, you had to get in a mindset to come from a place of contribution in order to know that you would be delivering your best material today. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. It was about taking the quiet time and, and asking myself the questions. What do the viewers need to hear right now? Yeah. What do they need to hear right now? What are the missing pieces that they need to hear right now? Yeah, and that's the approach that we're trying to get you to take with your clients as well. It's, it's what can I, what can I, you know, Wake up every day and don't think about how much you can get. Think about how much you can give. Yes. And that will really change your life if you come from a place of wanting to give. Yes. Absolutely. It's huge. It, it is a huge shift because what we're talking about is a purpose bigger than ourselves. That's what we're talking about. And it's yep. the mindset of saying, you know, what does this seller, what does this buyer need to hear, you know, and, and how can I help them? 
with one of the biggest transitions of their life. How can yeah. I help them? Well, speaking of transitions, um, you had a, a transition not too long ago um, from uh, from our company, right? We, we went to Chattanooga together, and, uh, and we both we both moved to EXP. And and I'm curious as to why you made the move, man. You know, I made I made the move, Mike. I, I've had I've had teams, and I've had buyers agents, I've had showing agents throughout the years. I wanted to always build a brokerage. I wanted to build my own brokerage. I wanted to have a team. And when I saw the EXP model and I saw the potential that I could have, I realized that this, this EXP is a vehicle for me to do something amazing. They have given me tools. They have given me tools to build my own brokerage, my own group. I moved over the middle of February. I have 35 people that are in my group today. Wow. wow. And I'm spending time every morning. It's what can I do? to bring more value for my group. What can I do to help my group sell more homes? Yeah. What can I do to help them? What can I do to be a blessing to them? What can I do today in this moment, every conversation with these people, what can I do? And it was, just, it's, it's been a huge mind shift. It's been a huge mind shift. Wow. And it, it was the best move I, I could have ever made. So. Well, Joey, man, I, uh, I really enjoyed our time together here today. And, and uh, just uh, love having you on the show. And uh, I know you delivered the goods today, and I uh, truly respect that. Uh, as always, I just love sharing these stories week after week because I know EXP is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. If you like the podcast, please go to wherever you're from the podcast and subscribe. If you want to learn more about EXP, and why it's the fastest growing real estate company in the world right now, please head on over to explodingwealth.com and check that out. If you want to jump on a call with me and learn more about my business, go to newmikewall.com. And real quick, Joey, if people want to connect with you, how would you prefer they do that, my brother? You know they they can uh, they can call call my office directly. We'd love to we'd love to connect with them. See if they're what we can do to help. If they want to book us up for any trainings or anything like that, please give us a call at 916-308-3333. That's area code nine one six three zero eight three 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 three. I'm old school. I like to pick up my phone. I love it. I love it, love it brother. Listen, thank, thank you so much, so much. and uh, we will talk again soon. Sounds good. Take care, Mike. All right, Joey. All right, Joey. Boom. Wow.